Oh, mountains of Mecca, what can you say of the day that Abraham passed your way? And he was instructed by God to build a house of peace where people will pray. And they will come on every lean camel and out of every ravine for the purpose of praising Allah. To glorify Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Hajj Insight. I'm your host, Ridwan Shamim, and with us with this journey of Hajj is our Sheikh Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, both I and the viewers have really enjoyed this series so far of listening to the Hajj step by step. Alhamdulillah, we have reached the stage of the day of Arafah, the great day of Hajj. And we have a few small questions just to finish off the day of Arafah. And the one we will start with is, we mentioned the importance of the day. Is there anything that will ruin, as you can say, the day of Hajj or make it invalid? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. For those whom Allah the Almighty have blessed and chose to perform Hajj and granted them this great honor of visiting His house and the possibility of forgiving the entire sins, they should not take a chance. They should not waste a moment. The day of Arafah is the day of the Zikr. And the day of the dua. Mm-hmm. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood at the stones in the beginning of the mount of Arafah and he said, Waqaftu huna wa Arafatu kulluha mawqif. There is a small valley which is called Uranah that is not a part of Arafah, so it is not permissible for people to hang around there. You will see a sign, so make sure that you not hang around there. And in the previous episode, I said, uh, wherever your camp is, it is recommended to stay where you are. Because if every person wants to attend at the mountain, and we have four million people, that will produce a chaos. Yeah. So it will be sufficient, as well as since we started from the beginning, with regards to kissing and touching the black stone, we said it's a sunnah. And since it's very crowded, uh, it will be sufficient to point from a distance. Yeah. Uh, with everything we said, it's uh, sunnah, and due to the crowd, if you skip it for the cause, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you. It's not that you skip it totally, but there is an alternative. For instance, praying the two rakahs of sunnah al-tawaf. As we read in the books, as we have heard that the Prophet sallallahu prescribed to be offered behind maqam Ibrahim. Yeah. But it is impossible. Everybody is performing tawaf. So step back, do it anywhere else. Uh, similarly, uh, stay where you are at your camp and occupy your time with the dhikr, with the dua, with the talbiyah. Uh, as a, the Prophet ﷺ said, أَفْضَلُ مَا قُلْتُ أَنَا وَالنَّبِيُّونَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ So uh, alternate between the talbiyah out loud, yeah. between istighfar, dhikr, and uh, the dua until it is sunset. When we say, Al-Wuqufu bi'arafah, which is uh, translated literally as standing. Uh, it does not literally mean standing because you can be standing or sitting down or reclining as much as you can. It is recommended at the time after Zawal, after praying Dhuhr and Asr, and obviously yeah. after attending the khutbah to stand up to make dua. But if you are uh, in the bus or sitting in the tent or uh, resting and making dua, that too is permissible. Uh, whatever restrictions of ihram is still constant with us okay. during during uh, uh, our stay in Arafah. And furthermore, you need to control your temper and uh, increase your patience a great deal. Uh, the sunnah is to hang around in Arafah until sunset for those who have entered during the day. Some people, unfortunately, they violate this tradition and they rush to leave uh, they want to be the traffic, so they leave before uh, sunset. And this is a violation, mm. so you should stay until sunset. 
And sometimes people go, uh, go with the um, uh, tour companies or maybe a local mutawwif or a tour guide. They don't know much, so he controls them. He takes them wherever he wants. Yeah. There is a difference between an educated person and a person who does not know. And that's why spending a couple of hours to learn about the rites and the rituals of Hajj would make you very distinguished. Yeah. And will guarantee that inshallah uh, you will perfect your Hajj. Once you pray Dhuhr and Hasr, the time will slip by very fast. Yeah. You would not feel it. This time you would not feel it. Some people approach in sunset, they will regret because we spend this time joking and laughing and uh, changing uh, phone uh, book and addresses mm -hmm. and all of that. This is not the time for that. Yeah. This is not the time for that. We're telling you that on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering you a forgiveness for your entire sins. So just cry for your sins and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness until it is sunset. We don't pray Maghrib and Isha in Arafah. Yeah. This is a sunnah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa uh, departed from uh, Arafah at sunset or past okay. sunset, did not pray Maghrib and Isha there. Rather, he prayed Maghrib and Isha combined together at the time of the later one versus Dhuhr and Asr. Okay. Where in the next step, which is Al Muzdalifa. Okay. Uh, it is very interesting to understand the reason of the name. We learn about Yawm al Tarwiyah, we learn about Arafah, uh, people get to know one another. Al Muzdalifa because uh, it's mentioned in the Quran some hours of the night because we depart to that valley which is a station between Arafah and Mina yeah. at several hours or some hours of the night okay. so Zulafah min al layl at some part of the night and we draw nearer to Mina through passing by al Muzdalifa. what do we do while we're departing or what we call it ifadah because we leave in groups the entire hujjaj would leave Arafah to the next station, which is Al Muzdalifa. Al -Muzdalifa. While you're leaving Arafah. Yeah. And, and that day was all about asking Allah, Allah forgiveness. for forgiveness and seeking forgiveness. So, crown this day, finish it up by making dhikr. Fazkurullah, remember Allah much. How much? The Meccan pagans used to brag about their lineage, their tribal uh, background. I am the son of such and such and so and so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraged the believers to remember Allah much more than the Meccans used to do or the pagans used to do, mm -hmm. bragging about their uh, parents. Yeah. Remember Allah much more than that. Then he compared between two cases. Some people whom whenever they have the opportunity to ask from Allah, they focus on one thing, worldly games. You name it, business, wife, children, whatever. And those are displaced. He did not remember to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything for the hereafter. Hmm. And there is another category that is praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do what? They keep balance. They say, our Lord, grant us a goodly reward of this life and a goodly reward in the hereafter and forgive us our sins. For such, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them a share of what they asked, of both the dunya and al-akhirah. They ask Allah to protect them against the fire of hell, qina adab al-nar, Allah will deliver. And Allah is quick in paying people or his servants their due uh, wages. So, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the entire time, yeah. out loud, individually or in groups, all of that is uh, permissible. When we reach Al Muzdalifa and we pray Maghrib and Isha, there is a little advice there. Sometimes due to the crowd and the traffic jam, I just want you to imagine that four million people in buses and in cars are going in the same direction yeah. to the same valley. You can imagine the jam. So sometimes we may not be able to reach Muzdalifa before the end of the time of Isha. Hmm. What is the last time for Isha prayer? Midnight. Not as some people think it is extended until Fajr. So midnight, the time that is divided between sunset and dawn. By two. It could be 11 p.m., 11.30, or 12, or could be uh, past one o'clock. It depends on the time in different areas. But I believe it would be around between 11 to 12. In this case, 
uh, if there is a room that you get off the bus and form a jama'ah and pray Maghrib and Isha before the last time of Isha. So that requires some fiqh, some understanding of the deen. Yeah. Especially that sometimes the traffic jam is very stagnant. Yeah. Bumper to bumper. And we can stay for hours in the same spot. We do not move an inch. So people, you see people get an off, disembark and make wudu and pray in jama'ah. Join them and seize this opportunity. Then obviously there is no designated areas no. Uh, for people or groups or countries. And this is very interesting. If President Obama accepted Islam and came to perform Hajj, he will sleep in Muzdalifa like everybody else. If he wants to perform a proper Hajj, if any king or ruler who really believes in Allah and wants to perform a proper Hajj, he will spend the night in Muzdalifa. Uh, where? In the open. Yes, when we purchase the package for Hajj, some people go for the five stars. Yeah. But in Muzdalifa, everybody will have unlimited stars. Because our spread will be the sand and the pebbles, yeah. the earth. And our cover will be the heavens with many, many stars. I personally believe uh, that time is uh, one of the best times in my entire life where everybody is the same, yeah. everybody is equal. And everybody feels light. Why? Because we just drop loads of sins in Arafah. Yeah. Everybody looks lovely, looks beautiful, and feels very good and fresh and lightweight. Yeah. So this is a very, very precious time that we spend the night after we pray Maghrib and Isha. Isha will be only two rak'ahs two rak'ah. uh, in Jama'ah. Then you pray your witch and you rest. Okay. He rested until it is Fajr. We get up to pray Fajr. And then we'll start the next move. But before we go to the next move, there are some people who are exempt from spending the entire night. Elders, what women. What we'll do, Sheikh, if that's okay, we'll have a break and we'll let the uh, viewers have, be, have a little suspense. So inshallah, join us after a short break to find out who are exempt from the staying of Muzdalifa full night. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Philosophy of Islamic Law, a program for restoring belief and trust within Muslims' mind and heart, and for re-establishing a true concept about Islamic rules for others. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. We've just been going through a very, very beautiful episode of Hajj Insight where we talked about the Muzdalifa night. Our Sheikh was going through some of the exemptions of those who do not have to spend the whole night. Bismillah, Sheikh. Who are these people that are exempt? Uh, elders, uh, women, and weak ones, and youngsters, people with disability. People who have to serve the hujjaj and the pilgrims. Okay. But they're exempt from staying the entire night. They may leave past midnight. Okay. So staying in Muzdalifa is a wajib. And we differentiated earlier between the rukn and the wajib. wajib. A rukn, if you did not do it, hajj is invalid. Yeah. Arafah is a rukn. You did not go to Arafah during the day or the night, hajj is invalid. Yeah. But you skip spending the night in Muzdalifa, you miss the wajib. And that can be rectified by offering a fidya, slaughtering a sheep to be distributed yep. in the haram, in yep. Mecca among the poor, as we explained before. But the sunnah is to hang around until you pray Fajr in al Muzdalifa. Okay. In all the rites and rituals of Hajj, there is something in common, which is a zikr, hmm. the remembrance yeah. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala between al talbiyah and al istighfar, al takbir, al tahmid, al tahleel. You find that in the next step, the next stage, which is leaving Muzdalifa to the next mm -hmm. station, which is Mina. In the morning, after we pray Fajr and before sunrise, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in verse number 198 of Surah Al-Baqarah. In verse 200 we spoke about the dhikr yeah. uh, uh, after relieving Arafah to Al-Muzdalifah. In this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَرِ الْحَرَامِ So when you leave Arafat, yeah. remember Allah at Al-Mash'ar Al-Haram. What's Al-Mash'ar Al-Haram? Al-Mash'ar Al-Haram is a mount by the end of Muzdalifah and before the beginning of Mina. Mina. It's called Quzah. Obviously, it is not announced or it is not known to everybody. Once again, for the same reason. If everybody knows that we, uh, it is the Sunnah to stand there and uh, four million people compete yeah, to stand there, chaos. another chaos. A Muzdalifah is the entire Muzdalifah except an area which lies between a Muzdalifah and Mina. A small valley, very tiny valley, is called Muhassir, Wadi Muhassir. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he passed by the area, he passed hurriedly. Yes. Why? There is a valley in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed Abraha and his army and the elephants who came to destroy the Kaaba on the year that the Prophet sallallahu was born. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-feel alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadlil wa arsala alayhim tayran ababil ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل فجعلهم كعصف مأكول. Allah destroyed them by sending their elephants and their soldiers yeah. by sending birds carrying stones from hell. May Allah protect us. It was a tradition of the Prophet ﷺ if he passes by the homes of ancient nations who happen to be destroyed yeah. to rush, not to wander around. So this is not a part of Muzdalifa. Yeah. al mashar al-Haram, approaching the end of Muzdalifa and prior to entering uh, but yeah. wherever you are, you pray Fajr and we we'll start moving, making Talbiyah and Takbirat. Remember that is the Eid day. Yeah. Happy Eid. That is the Eid Al-Adha day. So we make Takbirat. And don't forget, even though there will be traffic jam in the communications, also to give uh, uh, a phone call to your family members and relatives. Yeah. Assure everybody that Happy Eid and I included you in my Dua. It makes a big difference. Yeah. Uh, strengthens our family ties and it upholds the ties of kinship. Yeah. These are very, very important observations and advices that many people do not pay attention to. Yeah. This is a very good time uh, to connect again really. with family members and your kin. Um, in Muzdalifah and before leaving, the Prophet وسلم, asked Al Abbas to pick up some peoples for him. Why? Because we're going to use them on the 10th day morning which is the day of Al-Eid, or it is known as Yamul al hajj Al-Akbar. Seven peoples, the size of chickpeas. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're going to throw them at Jamratul Aqabat Al-Kubara. This is where the shaitan tried to obstruct the path of Ibrahim yeah. not to continue the manasik, etc. So he picked up seven peoples and he uh, threw them at him. So he uh, dispersed or he ran away and so on. Some people are under the impression that when you say Jamratul al aqabat Al-Kubra, which was at uh, Shajara, yes. um, they think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings a shaitan there and he fastens him against the pole. And when we beat, we actually beat the physical shaitan there. You hear a lot of uh, remarks, some of them are funny, some of them are very sad to hear yeah. uh, for Muslims and educated people. We've seen some people taking off their shoes, and big stones, uh, other big objects. This is not the, 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 the practice of the Prophet ﷺ. You want to hurt a shaitan? Follow the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ. Small seven peoples, the size of chickpeas. And on that morning, when you arrive there, you say, Allahu Akbar. And by the way, once you throw the first stone, you see the talbiyah. Compare between the case of the Umrah. Yeah. Once you come to the black stone corner and you, you begin your tawaf, you stop the talbiyah. And the talbiyah will be continued throughout the, the days and nights of Hajj, yeah. once you made the ihram, until you're ready to throw the stones, the first stone of Jamratul Aqabat Al Kubra on the Eid day. Okay. There is a very important thing that we missed, which is 
What about the ladies, the sisters, and the weak ones who left past midnight? Where did they go? Yeah. The purpose of leaving early is to reach Mina earlier, to be the traffic, so that not to compete with the rest of the pilgrims with regards to throwing the stones. It okay. is permissible for them to throw the stones once they reach Mina. It is recommended and mustahab to do that after Fajr. But the purpose of giving them uh, the concession to leave past midnight is to make it easy for them. Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha narrated fi sahih al-imam al-Bukhari. She said that I wish I have uh, taken that concession and joined Sauda bint Zam'a, another wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa she left early and she was able to throw the stones and she beat the yes. traffic. Hmm. They asked her, did she do that? She said, yes. And later on, Asma radiallahu ta'ala anha wa adlaha kept asking, uh, did the moon leave or disappear, indicating that past midnight has come? Uh, until she was told yes, then she started leaving hmm. al-Muzdarifa. When you go to Mina, if you're one of them, or a companion, one of them. If, if somebody is taking his mother with him, yeah. he's not going to tell her, you can go on your own. Okay, So he will accompany her, but he's physically fit. He's exempt too as well. This yeah. is a concession. Yeah. And that would not reduce your reward. So you can go and you throw the stones. The activities of the Eid day. Just a quick question about the stones. Uh, if on the way to throwing the stones you lose your stones that you collected uh, in Muzdalifa. Is it possible you can collect the stones anywhere else? Anywhere else. And uh, I really appreciate that you ask this question because some people think it is chemistry. That if you do not pick the stones from this particular place, something wrong would happen or, or, or. It's very, very simple. You, threw, you pick the stones or you had somebody to pick them up for you from al Muzdalifa. fine, you forgot, and somebody picked them uh, from uh, uh, Mina or on the way, or even close to the Jamarat area, but not from the basin itself. All of that is fine. It's just a stone. Yeah. Some people give extra care to the stones, wash them, wash them with soap and sanitizers and all of that. Uh, nothing of that uh, is permissible. It's just a stone. And the hadith is to follow the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ. You throw the stones, the first activity, once you reach to uh, Mina on that morning. And remember, continuously we're making dhikr. فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَرِ الْحَرَامِ وَاذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا هَدَاكُمْ Until we reach Mina and we throw the first stone, we we'll seize the talbiyah. And I believe, inshallah, in the next episode, we'll continue with the rest of the activities of the Eid day. We certainly will. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. And viewers, here we have excellent advice, following the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ and remembering Allah much. Until our next episode, Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. O oh, mountains of Mecca, what can you tell Of the day that stones from the sky fell Destroying an army determined to break The house of Allah that Abraham built O oh, mountains of Mecca, how was the dawn On the day that my prophet Muhammad was born How did it feel knowing he was to be The last and most beloved of all Rasul of Allah Nabi